Hey guys, Kyle's Custom Trains here, and today I'll be showing you how I weather most of my HO scale locomotives. In this video, I will be showing you how I weathered this Ather Genesis 9 in the BNSF Warbonnet scheme. The techniques I show in this video can be applied over a wide variety of locomotive types and road names. So these techniques will work on just about any diesel locomotive from just about any era. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the shell from the body. For some, this may not be a necessary step, but for me, I'm going to add some details into the cab and also take off the HVAC unit. So taking off the shell is going to make it a lot easier. So the first thing you're going to do to remove the shell is to take out the coupler housings. All you got to do is unscrew one screw on each end and they slide right out. So next, I remove the two screws holding the shell to the frame. And these are a little hard to access, but you'll see them. Uh, I had to remove the fuel tank to get to them on this model. Some of them you don't have to, but unfortunately that was the case on this one. So once you have those screws out, the shell should just pop right off. And the Atherin models are nice because you don't have to worry about any wires connected to both the shell and the frame. So you can move the shell freely without having to keep it too close to the frame, which I like. So the next step is going to be to remove the cab. And to start, you're gonna to want to disconnect any of the handrails that are both connected to the cab and the frame. This step can be a little tricky just depending on the model. I haven't had the best look on some of my scale trains models as I've broken some of the handrails just trying to get it out of the hole. But for the most part, this Atherin model was pretty easy to disconnect. As you can see, I just use a flathead screwdriver to kind of get in there and twist under it. And that seems to work pretty well without damaging it. So the last thing to get the cab off is there are going to be three screws located underneath of the cab. These are pretty small, so I highly suggest you put these in a safe place where they're not going to roll and fall on the floor because they will be very difficult to find. So once you get all those screws out, you're just going to want to check that all of the handrails didn't fall back into the holes and make sure they're all still disconnected. Then you're just going to want to lightly pull out on the shell and pull up on the cab. This will make sure that all of the tabs that are holding it into the shell are wide enough to not get caught. So now that I have the cab off, I'm going to remove the HVAC unit for repainting. The Atherton models make it really nice and it just slides right out as you can see. So now I'm going to get started on adding just a little bit of cab trash, which basically just equates to papers that have been tossed up on the dashboard and pretty much forgotten about. And this is a very common thing you see on locomotives. So basically all you do to achieve this effect is you take a little bit of white masking tape and cut it up into little HO scale sized pieces. And I just took a fine point sharpie and put a little writing on there. You also don't have to use masking tape, I just use it because it's easy and uh, sticks really well to the model and you don't have to try and glue it on there. So next I'm going to paint some of the details I'm going to add on. This includes the HVAC unit I took off earlier as well as the PTC antenna array. Now I am going to use an airbrush to do this and while you don't have to, I would highly suggest you do so because the end result turns out much smoother and it just looks all around better than if you were to hand paint this. And if you don't have an airbrush, I would highly suggest you invest in one because it's probably the most useful tool you can use while weathering. So now that I have those painted, I'm going to mask off all the sides of the HVAC unit, exposing only the top because on the prototype, the top of the HVAC unit is black while the rest of it is orange. And then I'm just going to hit the top of it with the airbrush again with black paint this time. So now I'm going to reassemble the shell, and if you're planning on putting crew figures into your cab, this would probably be the time to do so. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the HVAC unit back onto the cab and just leave the cab aside. Next, I'm going to hand paint the uh, details and antennas on the PTC array.
Next, I'm going to start to remove all of the antennas that came on the model from the factory. At first, I tried using tweezers, but as you can see, that really didn't work since the antennas are on there pretty good from the factory. So I had to resort to using my X-Acto knife, but that really didn't matter since I wasn't too worried about damaging the antennas since I don't plan on using them again. Now that those are off, I'm ready to put the PTC antennas on the roof. And to do this, since they're 3D printed, I just kind of take a screwdriver and pop them off of the base. It's pretty easy to do uh, if you go the same route as me using 3D printed ones. Just make sure you get all of the little stubs off of the actual antenna, uh, just so it sits nicely on the locomotive. Now I'm going to put the PTC antennas on the roof and align them just before I start gluing just to make sure I have them in the right place, which at the time of recording I didn't and after looking at several uh, prototype pictures I realized that I had the two on the end of the cab on backwards so uh, I ended up taking those off and just putting them back the right way later on off screen. Now that I've got the PTC antenna array glued on there, I'm going to do a little bit of detail painting on the grab irons. The Atherin model comes with red grab irons above the windows and yellow on the short hood. However, on the prototype of 777, both the grab irons above the window and on the short hood are yellow with red ends. So to replicate this, I painted some yellow onto the grab irons above the windows, and I tried to paint some red onto the ends of the grab irons in the short hood, but I don't feel like it ended up uh, turning out that well, so I ended up just painting them over in red and going down the middle with them with yellow again, and that turned out really nice. Now you may have noticed that I installed window defoggers into the front windows, which is something Scale Trains does from the factory. They just print theirs onto their windows, but Atherin doesn't do it yet. So what I did was I took some old handrails, cut them into sections about the length of the window, and then just painted them white and glued them in there. Now before I start putting the shell all back together, I'm going to paint some of these KD couplers I have uh, just to replace the McHenry plastic couplers that come on the locomotive. You always want to be careful while painting your couplers because if too much paint gets into the spring, it'll cause your coupler to lock up from time to time and even if it's just for a split second, it'll still cause your train to separate, which is never fun. So the next step is going to be to renumber the number boards. Now this technique will work on Atherin models for sure. I'm not sure about other manufacturers, but for Atherin they uh, leave their number boards clear and just have a uh, printed surface on them. The first thing you're going to do is to dip a Q-tip into a little bit of rubbing alcohol. In this case I use 70%, although 90% uh, I'm sure would work fine and would work a little bit faster. You just want to be careful of the paint. And as you can see, some of it's already starting to rub off onto the Q-tip, and you're just going to want to do this until you see it becomes clear. Now, if you don't care if your number boards are lit or not, or if the model just simply doesn't have it, I would suggest just taking a Sharpie over it and coloring over it. And now I'm just going to repeat the process on the other side. Next, you're just going to want to take a little bit of thin white paint and paint over where the number board was. 
This is so you can still see the numbers on the number board even when the number board isn't on. So what you're going to want to get is a decal sheet that looks a little like this. If you want lighted number boards, this decal sheet is going to be a necessity because most decal sheets don't come with uh, lightable number boards like this does. And this decal sheet has a variety of sizes and fonts, so you'll be able to decal just about anything with lighted number boards. So next you're just going to apply this like any water slide decal just by putting it in water and putting a little bit of Microsol on the uh, spot you're going to apply it. So as you can see, every time I put one of the decals on, I go through with a screwdriver and lightly uh, line them up. So once you have all the decals lined up, what you're going to want to do is just take a Sharpie and color in all of the spots that you don't want light to shine through, such as the ends and a little bit of in between the numbers because the decals don't line up perfectly with the number board and that's perfectly fine. So next I'm going to start masking off all of the windows and lights on the locomotive. These don't have to be perfect. Most of the time I just eyeball it and it looks perfectly fine. So what you're going to want to do is cover the windows and lights as best you can. But for this case, for the front windows, I'm going to cut out little curves to mimic the path of the windshield wipers. This will keep the windshield clean overall while also having a few dirty spots where the windshield wipers don't reach. I will say this technique is a little difficult to eyeball, especially if, since you want to get them pretty much all the same size and shape. So I'd highly suggest making a stencil out of something like styrene, just to make the process a little easier. Now that that's done, I just mask off the rest of the windows and lights that still need to be masked. I don't tend to mask off the number boards. You can, depending on how weathered it's going to be. Uh, usually I don't, just because those tend to weather with the locomotive and don't show the weathering as much as the rest of the locomotive. So now that the model is all masked, next you're going to want to hit it with a dull cut. This will help some of the weathering materials we're going to use later adhere to the model, but this will also dull the paint and 
take away the shine of the locomotive so it'll look like it's seen a few years of service at the very least. So the first thing I'm going to want to start airbrushing is all of the vents. Now I masked these all off camera because it's a lot of vents and it's just very tedious work. Now you don't have to do it with an airbrush. I've seen many different techniques used. I just prefer to do it this way because it turns out a lot more crisp and especially for Atherin Genesis models and scale trains models that have the see-through vents, it just turns out a lot better because there really isn't any paint clumping up in the vents. You definitely have to be mindful of making sure you cover all the spots you want to hit and not covering the spots you don't because it's very easy to miss a spot or to accidentally cover something up, especially with this much tape. Even here I missed a few spots and accidentally got some of the black paint onto the walkway and a little bit onto the body that I didn't want to hit, but overall it wasn't too hard to remove, which it's nice. Next, I'm just going to start removing some of the masking tape from around the vents. It dries pretty quickly, so you don't have to worry too much about it dripping onto the model where you don't want it to. Now that most of the masking tape is off and the exhaust is clear, I'm just going to hit it with the airbrush a little bit to simulate some of the soot uh, accumulating from the exhaust over the years. This is a step uh, that varies between models, as some locomotives' roofs may be like completely black, Others may not have very much set at all. It just depends and definitely look at prototype pictures depending on what you want. So I'm gonna go over the model with some white paint. Uh, I'm gonna apply it very lightly with the airbrush. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna fade the paint on the model. As you can imagine, locomotives fade pretty quickly being in the sun constantly. And especially the case with this one being over 20 years old at the time I'm modeling. You're going to want the fading to be nice and even, otherwise it'll look a little strange, which is why it's important to keep the airbrush a good distance from the model. And while it is possible to fade a locomotive without an airbrush, I highly suggest doing so with an airbrush just because it makes it so much easier and it goes on so much smoother. So here I'm just going to try and even out the fading. As you can see, I kind of didn't quite get it enough behind the cab, which I end up putting a little too much there, but in a little while it's not going to matter so much. Keep in mind it is important to fade the whole locomotive instead of just one part of it, because locomotives do fade pretty evenly, and even though it may not seem like it, the silver long hood is uh, changing color slightly. As I turn the locomotive around here, you can really tell just how much of a difference the fading makes. Overall, the prototype of this locomotive has retained its color pretty well, especially when compared to the Santa Fe war bonnets that are reaching 30 years old now and that are practically pink instead of their original red color. Now that the model is faded, I'm going to hit the trucks and fuel tank with a little bit of road grime. To start off, I'm just going to hit the locomotive with a little bit of this sandish brownish color. This is a nice light color where if you want to do something that's a little lighter on the weathering, it's good just to show that it's got a little bit of dust on it or it's been on the road for a little bit, but it's also been washed recently. This will only be a base coat for the trucks on this model as the fuel tank tends to stay this kind of sandish brown, but the trucks tend to be a brownish gray almost. And after doing it on the end, I'm going to come to the other side and just hit it with the same thing again. And you really don't have to worry about this getting in the roller bearing caps if you have a locomotive with the animated roller bearing caps such as this one. I've never had any issue with painting over them, having them get stuck or anything. If you use a very thick paint and hand paint them on, I can see where that might be an issue, but overall not something you have to worry about. 
Next, I'm going to go over the trucks with a little bit of a dark brown. For some reason, on a lot of BNSF locomotives, the trucks weather differently than the fuel tank. I'm not sure as to why that is, but it does make for a pretty cool effect. I am just going to briefly hit the snowplow with a little bit of the brown I used on the trucks as most of the time the snowplow weathers the same as the trucks. So now I'm going to start weathering the trucks individually, and to start I'm going to hit all the roller bearing caps with just a little bit of black sharpie, as a lot of the times on the road these wheel sets get replaced and the roller bearings don't weather the same as the trucks. So to really finish off the trucks, I'm going to hit them with a little bit of weathering powder. And to do this, I'm just going to take a little bit of water on the tip of a brush and mix it in there. Next, I'm just going to brush on the weathering powder just like I would any other paint. During this step, I would also suggest turning the locomotive upright and turning the trucks to make sure you hit all of the uh, spots you may not be able to see while the trucks are straight, as when the train goes through a curve, the trucks will show those spots and it will look a little weird if the sides of the trucks are weathered, but not the tops or the ends. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of rubbing alcohol just into a container and I'm going to shred some artist chalk into the container and just mix it up. And once you get to this step, I highly suggest you do not be as impatient as I was and dull coat the locomotive again first just to seal in all of the airbrushing you've already done prior. As it turns out, when you rub paint with rubbing alcohol, it just wipes right off. So you definitely want to have it sealed before you uh, take this step. So now I'm going to mix up the chalk with the alcohol and you want it to be thicker than water, just slightly thicker than the alcohol, and then you're just going to brush it right onto the model. Now this may look a little strange at first, but you're just going to take a wet paper towel and hit it, and this is the part where all of the uh, airbrushing starts to rub off. What this is replicating is essentially just dirt and grime getting in between the doors and all of the parts on the locomotive. While you don't need chalk necessarily, I would highly suggest using it as paint is just very hard to get off the model and you can find uh, artist chalk at basically any arts and crafts store. So now I'm just going to go over it again with another layer and I'm going to hit the radiator vents. Now this is one of the methods to darkening those if you don't want to mask off all of it, but like I said, uh, if you use this method, it's not going to turn out as dark as if you were to paint it black. When you're wiping off the chalk, it's important to remove it in an up and down motion. 
This is because the dirt and grime and everything is going to really wash down and fall down the side of the locomotive. And since it's far enough off the ground, there isn't really anything blowing it to the side or causing it to go to the side for any reason. It is important too to make sure you hit the roof of the locomotive during this step just to match the rest of the body of the locomotive. So now that the weathering on the locomotive is done, I can start to put it back together again, and I'll start by reapplying the handrails back onto the locomotive. So now I'm going to start unmasking the locomotive and I, as you can see I'm using the same screwdriver from earlier just to take it all off and I would be careful as the windows on these Genesis models as well as the scale trains rivet counter models are separately applied and are oftentimes not glued in all that well so they're pretty easy to take off with a little bit of the masking tape so but if that happens it's very easy just to glue those back into place again. So now I'm going to start by adding some reflective striping. Now this became mandatory back in 2005, so if you're modeling post-2005, odds are you're going to have to add this if it's not on your model already. So I'm just going to apply this the same way I do any other water slide decals, except these ones like to bubble up a little bit, so I use a Q-tip just to push them down, make sure they sit flat and don't try and uh, pop off the model like they have in the past for me. Now pretty much every locomotive with these reflective stripes has them applied in a different way so I would highly suggest looking at prototype pictures uh, and applying them based on that which is what I did here. I had a picture of uh, the real 777 pulled up and I was following that pretty closely. Now that all of the reflective striping is on there, I turn the model upright and I'm just going to take a little bit of black paint and get all around the exhaust where I kind of missed before. In this instance, I'm using black, although for some prototypes you may want to use uh, brown as the exhausts do tend to rust a lot. What I'm also going to do is paint the inside of the exhaust stack black as this will give it a little bit more depth and for some reason Atherin doesn't do it from the factory. Scale Trains does, but that's fine. It looks a bit better. Matte black anyways. And finally, I'm going to just apply some washer fluid buildup, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's just washer fluid built up on the short hood from under the windows. And to achieve this effect, all you're going to want to do is take some watered down white paint and just brush it uh, outward from the windows.
And that's really all there is to it. I'd like to thank you guys for watching and hope you find these techniques useful. And with that, I'll leave you with some footage of the newly weathered 777.